As we shall see in the final part of this course, design is influenced by economic, political, social, and cultural changes. The 2008 subprime economic crisis brought forth new forms of frugal design, similarly to the market crash of 1929, which birthed a new breed of designers. FDR's solution for the 1929 crisis, titled the New Deal, was in fact the paramount catalyst for a new branch of design dedicated to industrial products and the consumer. An underlying belief of the New Deal was that spending would bring back prosperity. This would be achieved through public spending, minimum wages for workers, to bolster spending power and designing dependables and desirable mass-produced products for the consumer market. This rapid shift in policy towards consumerism heralded the rise of new technologies and became known as the machine age. The resulting pessimism of the economic crisis of 1929 was moved aside by a growing belief in the power of design to bring about fundamental change in the economy and society as a whole. Contemporary designer and one of the fathers of the streamlined style, Norman Bel Geddes, spoke of the hope for a brighter future by implementing design. In his own words, Geddes describes it, Never before, in an economic crisis, has there been such an aroused consciousness on the part of the community at large and within industry itself. Complacency has vanished. A new horizon appears, a horizon that will inspire the next phase in the evolution of the age. We are entering an era which, notably, shall be characterized by design in four specific phases. Design in social structure to ensure the organization of people, work and leisure, Second, design in machines that shall improve working conditions by eliminating drudgery. Third, design in all objects of daily use that shall make them economical, durable, convenient and congenial to everyone. And lastly, design in the arts, painting, sculpture, music, literature and architecture that shall inspire the new era. In such a changing design world, American designer Henry Dreyfus presented a breath of fresh air. In 1955, Dreyfus published a seminal book titled Designing for People, in which a new and innovative approach towards design is elaborated. Similarly to French architect Le Corbusier's attempt to define what he called the living machine, designers also wrestled with the idea of universal standards of designing objects. Bear in mind that Dreyfus spearheaded designers' efforts to understand the needs of the user nonetheless. He did it from a marketing-oriented approach, though. In other words, Dreyfus's, much like La Corbusier in architecture, Jean and Joe became a global example of the typical man and woman, imposing ergonomic and physiological constraints on the work of designers. In fact, the average physiology and size of Joe, the man, and Jane, the woman, became such a well-known standard, they were transformed into the catchphrase average Joe. Naturally, when thinking of global physiologic differences, this approach is highly problematic in encapsulating the Western body as the standard. But at least it was a nudge in the right direction, i.e. focusing on the end user. From the 1960s till now, political and economic changes were mirrored in design philosophy and agendas. One such shift was the focus in the end of the 1980s to what was later defined as inclusive design. According to this approach, Instead of excluding minor social groups such as disabled persons, the designer designs for the margins and the rest will follow. This should result in design outputs that not only meet the needs of extreme users in the design process, but are also attractive and usable to mainstream society as well. The OXO pillar is a classic and well-known example of this approach. Rather than design a specific kitchen utensil targeted at arthritis patients, this peeler became a favorite for all, therefore camouflaging the original patient's discomfort in a design shell. Indeed, as an epitaph of inclusive design, the OXO peeler exemplifies how the standard user, rather than being the healthy average Joe, is rather the disabled user. Arthritis patients find the ribbed and thicker handle much easier to use. As an added factor, other users love this product since it is better designed than other similar products, whereas the ribs prevent slippage while washing vegetables. More recently, researchers have described inclusive design as a design ideology that incorporates multiple methods to achieve inclusive outcomes that meet the needs not only of a physically diverse population, but also a culturally diverse one. However, 
While inclusive design is certainly an important concept, recently the term has been criticized. A central criticism would be that one cannot involve every representative user in the inclusive design process and consequentially designers may be leaning to meet one user's needs at the expense of another. This will often result in design that meets special needs opposed to comprehensive inclusive design. In a current reframing of empowerment through design, design theoreticians called for broadening the scope of inclusive design relating also to political issues as well as social-cultural ideologies. In our final example, we present the most current agenda towards design in which we define a design situation, but not only try and facilitate the life of the user, but rather empower him or her to an elevated stance compared to his former and healthier self. Rather than focusing on designing a product, this current approach deals with redefining the design situation as a whole. As such, designers take into consideration not only the product itself, but the various users, for example, medical staff, patients, and family members, as well as the social cultural surroundings. For example, the user of a prosthetic leg is not only the patient himself, but also the physiotherapist, the patient's family, and the surrounding social cultural milieu, influencing the use of aesthetics in this medical product. In such an approach, then, the designer is not only a material facilitator or mediator, but rather a cultural agent creating material interpretations of specific situations. Key to this understanding are the theories of American anthropologist Clifford Geertz and German philosopher Hans Georg Gadamer. While the former asserted that actions and indeed rituals should be addressed as texts to be interpreted by anthropologists, the second, Gadamer, presented a much broader approach. Geertz described every cultural interaction as a text which the anthropologist needs to decipher and interpret. However, Gadamer's main innovation was the assertion of the universalism of hermeneutics, i.e. the understanding unlocks the self and the world while creating a new relation between the two. Language, therefore, is the horizon of hermeneutic ontology, or in other words, interpretation is the base of language. Therefore, art, or indeed design, is not situated in or for itself, but rather through the mediation of language. In other words, the relation between visual or material representation, language and comprehensibility creates hermeneutic knowledge or understanding. Naturally, since Gadamer's assumptions are relevant to all human experience, design falls in these wide margins. In this last example, we will see how this mediation is manifested in the world of medical or other design through the combination of visual and material semiotic language and interpretation. In this final example, then, a leg prosthetic cover designed by the firm Unique shows a reflection of the situation rather than a mere product. While classic design takes into consideration the various users, this US-based company takes into consideration also the socio-cultural surroundings. Therefore, with the resemblance of Marvel's Iron Man, the disabled person will not only function, but also enjoy positive reactions from his immediate surroundings. Therefore, a new path has begun. The shift from mere function or necessity to the elaborate design of the product situation. Indeed, while this example focuses on the feelings of the disabled person, other design physical enhancements can actually change the ways he or she interacts with the world. These, for example, include bio-designed eyes that possesses thermal imaging properties or biologic prosthetics that are stronger and sturdier than physical limbs.